Uh, welcome back. Uh, I'd like to talk about the uh, MMMQ today. So last time we talked about the MMMQ, the difference here is that uh, without the last one, basically we don't limit how many podcasts or like customers can be in the system. So we can, let's say, to have like infinite number of customers uh podcast so basically we have we can think of we have a queue that it can be infinitely long and we have like m servers here there's m of them and uh each of them let's say they can process a customer with an average rate of mu and uh the incoming um traffic or arrival will be at the weight lambda and uh, the incoming is uh, incoming this uh, arrival process is person and then the outgoing is also kind of person so all like more precisely will be uh, the surface time will be exponentially distributed with a weight mu so uh, again, like what we're going to do is to draw the state diagram first. Um, consider, like, again, we have a very tiny period of time delta that, like, we start at a particular time, let's say time equal to zero, and we want to look at, like, what's the state after a very short period of time, like delta. So, again, this delta is very small, so therefore, like, um the probability to have more than one event that happen will be very small um so let's say we draw the state diagram now have zero one two three and so on this correspond to like no packet in the system and one packet two packet three packets in the systems and as the queue is infinite we can go all the way to infinity. Now, <clears throat> uh, for the arrival, uh, or like for uh, stay from zero to one, one to two, and so on, um, this transition probability is very simple because after delta period of time, the there's a chance of lambda delta that from stay zero will go to stay one because in this way you have no packet and there's a chance of lambda delta there will be one packet in the system so therefore like uh it will become one packet by the time at this delta here and similarly if initially it has one packet in the system there's a probability lambda delta to go to two packets and so on and so forth Now going back is a little bit more complicated. Um, from if initially there's one packet in the system, or like in that case you can think of in this one server, one of the nodes is actually busy. Maybe I will just draw like that. It's saying it's busy, and this packet will have uh, a probability mu delta that it will be finished serving after delta period of time so therefore uh, the transition probability here is just mu delta and if I have two packets in the system at the beginning let's say these two are busy at the beginning so either one of them will be finished with probability mu delta so therefore overall if I just want to look at what's the probability that one of them get finished the probability will be just 2 mu delta uh, well, let me do that uh, similarly this would be just 3 mu delta and so on and so forth and uh, and from the state m to m minus 1 uh, that would be just m mu delta the transition probability but 
from m plus 1 to m, in this case, all these m servers will be busy. Basically, I have all of them are busy. And at the same time, there's one packet in this here. Uh, and the probability, therefore, like to get one of these packet get served will still be m mu delta. So therefore, we can this will be still be m mu delta and so on. And so, so on and so far for uh, this state. Oh, this is too ugly. Stay um, m plus 2, m, m plus 3, and so on. Now we have this state diagram drawn already. So the next step we want to do is find the stationary probability. Let's say the stationary probability is just pi 0, pi 2, pi 1, pi 3, it's pi m minus 1, pi m, and so on and so forth. Um, then uh, just look at what's going into like this day zero and what's going out of this day zero. We'll have the for stationary probability, uh, steady state probability. We need to have what's going in is equal to what's going out. What's going in is like pi zero times mu delta, and what's going out is. Sorry, what's going in is pi 1 times mu delta. What's going out is pi 0 times lambda delta. So therefore, pi 1 is equal to lambda over mu times pi 0. And again, let us define rho as lambda over mu. So therefore, this is just equal to rho pi 0. And similarly, uh, we can look at this block here and see what's going in. For these days, the probability not going to change. What's going in has to be equal to what's going out. So, therefore, like, what's going in will be pi 2 times 2 mu delta, and what's going out is pi 1 times lambda delta, so pi 2 is equal to Lambda over 2 mu pi 1 uh, is equal to uh, rho over 2 uh, pi 1 is equal to rho squared over 2 pi zero. And we can continue to do that. And we can see that for all stay when k is less than or equal to m pi k is just equal to rho to the k rho to the k over k factorial times pi zero and uh, and if we have like uh, pi pi m plus k where k bigger than equal to zero is just equal to rho to the m plus k pi zero uh, m factorial and then m to the k. So what next is that uh, again these probabilities because they are probabilities they have to sum up to zero so therefore, if I sum pi, let's say pi i, i equal to 0 to infinity, this one should equal to, oh sorry, I mean sum up to 1, it should normalize to 1. So, and then um, I have uh, i from 0 to m, let's sum like this, pi i plus Speed this summation i uh, equal to uh, 0 to infinity pi m plus i, or let's say sum to m minus 1, and this m plus i. So then the
first term, let me just copy the first term. I'm not, uh, uh you could assume m minus one pi i is rho to the i pi zero over i factorial and this is sum over i equal to zero to infinity and m i can put this out i have m factorial put it out pi zero i can put it out and uh, actually I can put a vote to the M also. Uh, so I have inside just vote to the K over M to the K. And vote to the, this one I know how to sum it. It's just equal to 1 over 1 minus rho over M. I uh, zero m factorial rho to the m, and this one I can do very little about it actually, but I can I can pull out the pi zero here. And I have I factorial. This one is equal to one, so. Mm -hmm. Looks like I need to make the new page here. Uh, so therefore, this one is just pi zero is just equal to. One over this. Um, now, what we want to find is, let's say, we want to know what is the probability that a packet uh, need to wait in the queue in the queue when it arrives so okay we want to find the probability that i was the packet need to wait in the queue when it arrives uh so what will be the probability of this this probability should be just okay if we look back into the picture first. Uh, I guess I skip one page here. If I look back to the picture here, um, I I don't need to wait in the queue when the packet arrives. When of obviously, if there's no packet in the system, and I don't need to wait in the queue when there's one packet, two packet, and so on. I would only need to wait in the queue when all M servers are busy. So therefore, like uh, we need to wait in the queue only when the stay uh, is bigger than or equal to M. So therefore, this probability here. Just one page. Let me move this thing back. So the probability here is just equal to sum over pi k k equal to m to infinity and uh, or I can write like sum over pi m plus k k equal to zero to infinity and pi m plus k as we know above is equal to this one here let me just copy this one here down there okay 
is equal to go to the m plus k times pi zero over m to the k m factorial and uh and that will be equal to pi zero I can put out m factorial here and uh, I can put out vote to m also so I have vote m over k u zero to infinity and that's equal to pi zero vote to the m m factorial one minus four minus m that's that's the summation or right? is equal to one minus rho minus rho over m and I, I i want to mention this because this equation actually have a name for that this is known as the erlang uh, c equation i think formula erlang c formula okay so also um let me denote this uh, average, um, I mean the probability that a packet need to wait in a queue when it arrives as PQ. So just let me give a shorthand notation for it as PQ. So now I want to uh, analyze the wait time and delay and that kind of stuff. So to find the average wait time, uh, let us first find like what's the average number of packet in the queue first because if we find that we can use little theorem to find the average wait time so let's see what's the um average number of packet in the system uh in the queue average number of packets oh, my handwriting is horrible yes. in queue uh, let's call it nq and this nq will be just equal to the sum of k equal to uh, 0 to infinity pi m plus k uh, times k right so that's the average uh, as like if we uh, state m plus k that would be like k packets in the queue and that is equal to um, k go to the m k times k equal to zero to infinity pi zero go to the m over m factorial uh, and I kind of know how to sum this thing right this thing is just equal to um pi zero go to the m m factorial to the m times one minus one go to the m i think i don't need that Square. and that that this is the number of uh, packet in the queue uh, for convenience let, let's see I already know that this part like this thing with this is equal to PQ therefore actually I can write this as PQ times rho over m over 1 minus rho over m it's pretty leak expression here and uh, from this i can find the wait time now the uh, average wait time is it, let me write it as w is just equal to nq uh, over lambda that's by the theorem 
So it's just equal to P Q over lambda for over M one minus four over M. And actually the average delay therefore is just equal to the average wait time plus average surface time, right? But the average surface time is just equal to one of a meal because like we, we know that uh the surface weight is one of a meal uh, is equal to meal. So and that, that's it. And I I can copy that or like I will just skip this. And then like I, I can also find the average uh number of packet in the system as let's call this average delays as t as just lambda t uh, I, here is I uh, will use the little theorem again also we use little theorem here uh, that's that's about it that what we can analyze about this system one thing I like to mention that is kind of interesting that you see that uh, the average number of packets in the Q and Q has a pretty less expression uh, if we represent it using uh, PQ. Um, actually, if we think of like what's NQ over PQ is actually is really the number of packet in the Q given that the packet or like in the view that in the view of the packet that lead to weight in the queue. Okay, it's a little bit, a little bit mouthful actually. Um, but if you think of like a packet that get into the system, let's say this is the system again. So there's two possibilities, right? Either the packet get into the system when all these server are busy um, there's something in the queue, then you need to wait in the queue, right? And there's also another possibility that like only some of this um, server is busy and when it gets in, it can immediately be served and doesn't need to wait in the queue. And uh, we can write the average number packet in the queue as average packet I skip this number here leverage number packets in Q given it to weight given it to weight and times probability that it need to weight the packet need to weight plus Average number packets in Q given no need to weigh, not weigh, say probability not weigh. And of course, this probability that need to weight in the Q is just PQ, and does not need to weigh is just 1 minus PQ. And um, um, actually, if you doesn't need to wait in the queue, apparently the average number of packet in the queue at the time that like the packet coming, the the target packets that get into the system, will be just equal to zero, right? So therefore, this second term here is just equal to zero. So then we see that the average number of packet in the queue 
given that the packet coming needs to wait, is just equal to this average number of packet in the queue. That's NQ here over PQ. So okay, so therefore, like again, like this, therefore that explain why this very mouthful stuff is actually just equal to NQ over PQ. But the interesting part is like if we go back to this picture here, that means that like if we only think of the packets that when they come in, the server is kind of busy, and then the size of the queue there is just have the average length of rho to the m, 1 minus rho to the m. And this expression, we, we actually, uh, we saw that before in the mm one q. Um, in the mm one q, um, the number of packet in the queue is actually rho minus one over rho, and this this kind of makes lots of sense because if you look at this picture here, when the packet is coming in, when you need to wait in the queue, what you see is more or less like is actually it looks like just an mm one queue, but it it's being served by a server that you can think of like this parallel server that um the overall throughput will be like instead of mu it will be like m mu right so therefore like we have one uh this wo over m here instead of wo and uh and this actually kind of uh explain a lot like intuitively why this expression is so